What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. I am here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. I'm so glad you decided to join us today for another episode of the Masterclass Podcast. We are Alabama's only real estate podcast, and we're up to episode number 79 of our interview show. We're about a year and a half into this thing. Been very, very fortunate to get some incredible guests, not only locally, but all throughout the country to come on our show and provide us with their expertise in the area of real estate and real estate investing. And today is no different. We have Trevor Mock with us, who is the, well, I don't even know what to call you, the founder of Investor Carrot. I'm so excited to speak with you, Trevor. How's it going? Dude, it's going great. And I appreciate the invite on here. It's it's funny. Like as, over the years, as I've become uh, more honed in as, as an entrepreneur, I found the things I love to do. And some of the things that fire me up and give me energy are hopping on and doing trainings, teachings, just things like that, man. So I appreciate the invite. Man, I feel the same way. I really do. Um, I have a, I have a, my background is education and uh, mm-hmm. I have a master's degree in education and just, and I used to coach basketball. And so being able to marry real estate tr- and then actually, you know, with training and education is, it, it fires me up too. So I'm, I'm okay. excited to talk to you, the expert. Really, I, I want to talk about search engine optimization today and how yep. investor care at your website i've i've heard about this thing for years and probably ever since i, I don't know how long i'm going to ask you these questions i don't know how long you've been doing this but for years and years um we've done some stuff specifically so i really what i want the audience to get out of this today is how can we get more deal flow through the use of our online marketing so that's where Sweet. we're going to go today trevor if you don't mind before we get into all that tell everybody who you are where you're from and uh, and what investor care it even is. Awesome. So I'm going to preface it with this. So anyone listening to this, I've got a deeper voice than normal. I got my radio voice going on. I got my Barry White voice going on. Um, I'm here in Oregon. So I live in a, in a small town in Southern Oregon called Roseburg. We love it here. Uh, about a town of about 25,000 people. It's actually part of our part of our mission is really uh, igniting entrepreneurship and entrepreneur culture in rural America, starting here in small town Roseburg. And um, yeah, my name is Trevor Mock, uh, CEO and co-founder of Carrot, and we help uh, thousands of real estate investors now generate a lot of leads online, over 2 million leads in the past 38 months or so, Wow, 100% online leads. That doesn't include you know, buying traffic or anything like that. It's like 100% or, or buying lists and doing direct mail. It's all online. So people go into Google, typing in a search phrase, and then landing on an organic search listing or hitting a Google AdWords thing or even some some Facebook stuff now. But to tie back to the to the organ thing really quick, allergies are going around right now. So you guys are going to have to put up with my deeper voice. Uh, allergies nailed me a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to power through this. I'm excited to be on here. But what, what we primarily help investors with was – Shoot, when we started the company, it was four years ago now, four and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we have thousands of customers now, but we started with just one, you know, one and an, an idea. And my previous background before this was I started investing in real estate when I was in college. I bought my first fourplex when I was 21, going to Oregon Institute of Technology here in Southern Oregon. And um, I'm like, man, I think I can do this real estate thing and build up a passive portfolio. And at that time, I thought I wanted to flip houses or do wholesaling. And for me, as I dug in, that's the beauty of real estate is you can do you can use your leverage real estate to do almost anything you want to do. And for me, I'm like, I really love the idea of building passive income. But for my active income, I love marketing. Like I really, really love figuring out how to how to how to hone a message, get it in front of someone and then guide them to a better, better solution in their life or business. And so for the years after college, I started just kind of learn how to be a marketer. I did some marketing for mortgage companies. Um, did some other things. And over the years, I became really good at learning how to drive leads online. How do you use content and written words on a web page to then get ranked really high in Google? And then once someone is there, how do you get them to engage in the page, realize that you are the solution for them, that you're going to help solve their problems better than anyone else, and then them become a lead. And um, a lot of real estate investors, as I was working with a ton of them, kept on coming to me over the years and like, hey, so I see you getting a lot of leads for yourself and for your clients. Uh, I was getting leads for myself for um, for my rental properties, for tenants and things like that. But then I was working with other investors to get buyers, motivated house sellers, some tenants, things like that. And I kind of fell into this. Um, you know, we were generating leads, setting up some websites. And then I tell all this story on my own podcast. I'm not going to dive into it now unless we get into it. But um, like a lot of us do, 
I was really excited as an entrepreneur the first couple of years, kind of in that honeymoon. And then honestly, I got burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, I was making some good money, but I got burnt out. I wasn't enjoying doing what I was, you know, that the business I'd created, dude, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. I didn't yeah. want to get up in the morning to do the work. So I kind of went through a little uh, mid entrepreneurial crisis, a midlife into entrepreneurial crisis and got rid of everything. All of my businesses sold them except for my real estate and my consulting company. And out of that, I realized, man, the call to arms for small businesses and real estate investors is for the past decade has been, you just got to get online. It's got to get online, right? Yeah. Go get the easiest possible solution to get online. As long as you're online and it looks pretty, you're good. The problem was when everyone is online, all your real estate investing buddies are online. How do you actually get results? Well, you've got to, you've got to learn how to get in front of them and you got to learn how to then convert them into a, into a lead. And we said, you know what, we can solve that. So that's when carrot was born and we've been, been doing that ever since. I mean, there's so much I want to talk about based on what you just said, but I, I do want to talk about what you said that you don't really, that doesn't seem like you don't really want to get into because you talk about a lot on your own podcast, which mm -hmm. I've only seen a couple of your epi episodes, by the way, just because of some yep. friends of mine have been on there. Um, so I apologize. I haven't seen, I haven't watched them all or, or You're heard good, them man. all. But um, I, I want to talk about this. I believe it was Jim Collins in Good to Great, where you sit here and you talk about um, something you need to find something that you're you're good at and, you're, and then that you're passionate about, but you that you can also make money at. You mm. got to marry all three of those things, and it sounds like you have done that, but you weren't doing that because and and you experienced some burnout. It's the exact same thing that happened to me as real estate investor, especially if you're wholesaling and flipping. It's very transactional, which means mm. you can't you don't have anything you know residual coming in like like a passive income piece. That can be that can totally burn you out, and a lot of people who are newer don't really realize that. Oh man, if I get you know thirty and fifty thousand dollar chunks here, you know doing wholesale and doing flips, I'm good, man. I'm good. It you experience so much burnout with that because it's such hard work to do that. But just talk about the importance, Trevor, of putting something in place. Like for you, it was marketing, but putting something in place where you could. Combine something that you're really good at, which is real estate, with something that you're passionate about, which was marketing. Just talk about the importance of that and maybe how someone could do that. I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting, right? Because cause I think all of us become entrepreneurs, whether you're a real estate investor, an agent, or any other type of entrepreneur. We all become entrepreneurs for what, what I've distilled down to just a few fundamental reasons, right? It's you want the freedom uh, from entrepreneurship, hopefully. Uh, you want the flexibility that you, that you think a, a business and entrepreneurship can can get you. Uh, you obviously want the finances, which hopefully can get those two, get the freedom and flexibility. Then someday we hope we can make an impact. And usually people don't start a business with impact. Usually they get there as they kind of figure some things out. But it's right. freedom, flexibility, finances, then impact later. And the problem was the way that I had started my company before, you know, I was really interested in this stuff. I was doing marketing. Like, I love that part of it. But the problem was um, I had built a business that was making really good money as a mid 20 something year old guy. I'm 35 year olds, 35 years, years old now. And so this is in about 2012, 2011, when I was kind of going through that point where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just hating what I'm doing. I was making good money. I was making low six figures as a, as a young guy. Mm -hmm. um, everyone was probably looking at me going, man, he's got it made. He can travel and he works from home and da, 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 da. I hated it. I hated yeah. every second of it in that, after about two years of it. And it boiled down to this. I want people to really think about this and write this down is what, what nailed it for me was um, I was realizing, I heard from a mentor of mine, I actually joined a mastermind because I'm like, I need to get myself around this guy specifically because right. I really admired the way that he worked. And I, and I just felt from the outside anyway, I'm like, I think he's kind of got some things figured out that I want to borrow, borrow from. His name is Greg and he's still a really good friend of mine today. And um, so he said, man, you've got to find your unique ability. And I'm like, okay, unique ability. It's it's probably exactly what Brian just mentioned there. It's probably the things I'm good at. I could be great at them and people pay me for them, you know? And, um, and I'm like, okay, let me do those. Let me find those things. And the thing was, I was kind of tricked because people were paying me really, really well for these things that they were saying I was really, really good at. Right. The problem was they drained my energy. Mm -hmm. And so this one question that this lady asked me at this program called Strategic Coach, who teaches unique ability and a bunch of other things, I took it in 2011, 2012, changed my life, was she said, your unique ability is are the things that you you're you're good at you you could be you could be world class at it if you honed it and worked on it but it gives you more energy when you're done doing the thing than when you started it 
And so we started go, kind of going through and tank, kind of taking like a little, what I call now an energy audit. What are all the things that I want to do or that I'm doing in life and doing in work that give me energy? And what are the things that take it away? And so she walked us through a really simple exercise. Now I've honed over the years this thing I call the energy audit that I do every single quarter. Um, I've got a, a whole stack of them back there. I walked wow. through it with my team and it changed my life. Every quarter I moved from, from probably 80% of my time was zapping my energy to now probably 80% of my time gives me energy. Wow. And it was all the energy on it. What is, what are the things you are really good at, could be world-class at, but give you more energy when you're done with them than when you started. And that is how I then completely transitioned out of my old business. And I wrote these five non-negotiables and I suggest every single person do this because if you build a business the wrong way, it can trap you. That's what happened to me. I wanted the freedom, the flexibility, the finances. I had the finances. I didn't have the flexibility because I built my business the wrong way. It was a boom and bust business model. Like you mentioned before, you got the big checks, but what happened was at the end of the year, my tax return would show I made really good money, but I was on the seat of my pants every single month because I was like, ah, it's not consistent. I've got to put out new marketing. I've got to go out there and get new business every single month. And it's stressful because I made 120,000 this month, then I make 7,000 the next month, splitting it with the business partner. You know, and it was stressful as heck. At the end of the year, it was great. All the taxes, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. But during it, it was stressful as crap. So I got rid of the boom and bust business model with my five non-negotiables. I, I think everyone needs to sit down and write those things that give you energy um, when you're done doing them, things that take them away. The trick here is don't just write down the things that you're currently doing in your work, okay? Write down the things that in general give you energy in life and business. For me at that time, I was doing none of this stuff. I wasn't doing any podcasting. I wasn't uh, helping uh, team members, you know, grow them as as leaders. I wasn't doing a lot of um, other things that just really pumped me up. I was doing all execution of marketing. Execution drains my energy. Mm -hmm. Strategy gives it to me. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I'm like, man, execution is making all my money. I can't just strategize all day long and throw things on the whiteboard and then walk away. Someone's got to do the work. Right. So that's where the energy audit came in. Every quarter, I'm like, okay. I want to add more of this strategy stuff over here and I want to do more content, but how do I make money from that? Well, I've got to, the execution has got to be done. So I'd circle that thing and I'd say five hours a week is what it takes me to do that execution. I'm going to, that's my main mission this quarter, find someone or create a process to do those things for five hours a week. And then I take that five hours and I move it over to the other side to doing content and things that fire me up and strategy. So yeah, I, I talk about this topic all day long, dude, because there's so many entrepreneurs that fall into that trap that want those the, the Fs, freedom, flexibility, finances. They might get the finances, but they're trapped. So I want to keep talking about it because mm -hmm. I think it's super important. And and cool. I and I want to talk about investor carrot. I want to be respectful of your time too. So you let me know if you're you're ready to go. Hey, I'm pumped, man. Okay, We're cool. Good. I do want to continue talking about that, but the but before I ask you kind of like the the how to kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. For someone who's new, for, for someone who's new to the business and maybe they just did their very first deal, very first wholesale deal, very first flip and just got their first check, maybe their second check, how can we start? How can those people specifically start to do some of this stuff like the energy audit? How can people start to build a true business that early? Because in the early stages, it's all about cash flow. Yep. And, and you got to have cash flow just to sustain the business, to keep it going. How can yep. we kind of have a balance of the two? Yeah, so I, I, think, I think it's a mixture between energy audit, which I'll, I'll give you guys specifics on. And actually, I can drive you. I can give you a link, and you can put it below this or whatever. It's free. We don't even ask for an opt-in. Like, we're just going to give you guys my download for my energy audit. Um, do you want me to give you a link, or do you want me to stay it on, on here? I'm going to ask it in one second. Stay on the, stay on the question for a second. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm going to get cool. to it. So I'll, I'll give, I'll give you guys a link to download my energy audit and it gives you the instructions and everything. Do that once a quarter, stay diligent with it. That's going to change your life. Anyone can do that even before you've ever done a deal. Totally. But I think, I think the important thing is when you, when you, when you're diving into real estate, especially a lot of people start with flipping and wholesaling, which is amazing. Like it's amazing. That's an amazing spot to start. And it's an amazing spot to keep going because it creates great cash. Right. But you need to have a plan with, okay, do I want to be doing this business in five and 10 and 15 years? If you don't want to on, on the every day, make that your every day where you're, you're out there 
getting contracts and then flipping them over, whatever it is, if you don't want to do that in five or 10 years, what's your plan to create that, that more passive momentum building income? And that's what I refer to it today as momentum building income, because oftentimes it's really hard to build momentum when you're just in that transactional every single week, every single kind of month thing. You're out there to try to kill the three deals that month or the five or the 10 or whatever it is you're trying to do. But if you can take part of that income and go, okay, I wrote out my plan for the next 20 years, the next 10 years, whatever it is. Um, and this is what I literally do is every single year I sit down and write out like in story format in one of my orange notebooks and I write out my, my 20 year vision story, my 10 year vision story, my five and my one. I do that every year. And literally, I just like start to write story format in 20 years from today. It's 2018. So whatever that is, 2038, here's how my life will look. Here's what my wife will be probably be doing. Here's where my kids will be. And here's where my business will be. And here's the things I will be doing in my businesses. And here's what the business will look like probably. And here's the impact we'll be making. And here's probably where we'll be living. And like I get insanely detailed on it, mm. even to the, even to the, to the, to the detail of like, what I'll be doing with my parents and what my parents will be doing and how, how I'll help them do this. And like, I get really detailed with it and then I work it back to 10 years In 10 years. What do I have to do in order to hit that 20 year vision story in five years? And then this year, what do I have to do? And what that does is it starts to guide you on how to structure your business. Because if you have a vision story for where you want to go, then you can really intentionally go, okay, so here's what I need to do this year. So I just did my first deal. Maybe awesome. I need to, I need to keep doing more deals because I need to have, have some cash coming in so I can then start to put them into assets right. that then build me that passive type of income. It could be real estate for me. It's real estate and businesses. So I take, I take the money, my active income from my consulting and my software company and I put it into real estate for passive and I put it into businesses as passive investments too. So you just got to be intentional about it. And I think that's where people get burnout is um, either burnout or they're in the business for a year or two. They're crushed it that first year or two. And then you'll find so many people that a year ago did a bunch of deals and then they're out of business today. And it's because they didn't have an, a logical evolution of how they were going to take that cash flow they were making today and put it into a machine to build right. momentum. It's, yeah. it's almost like they they – almost grow a little too fast or they, or they go and blow their money, you know, mm -hmm. um, which happens a lot too. So yeah. Trevor, talk, talk about the, you know, you're talking about your, your five non-negotiables. Is that mm -hmm. all in the, is that in the energy audit? Talk about that and give that link and, and kind of tell everything about that. Yeah. So if you guys go to on carrot.com, so O N C A R R O T.com forward slash energy. So on carrot.com forward slash energy, uh, you can land there. No opt in required. I'm pretty sure 99% sure. Just download the darn PDF. It's because it changed my life so much. I like, I want everyone to have it. And, um, so go over there, read the instructions, do it as far as, as far as the non, the five non-negotiables. So, um, let me pull this up on my computer because it's something that I, did years and years ago and I baked it into my business and um, we've got our core values on the wall and things like this. But what, what I, what I did was I was looking at my previous businesses before that and I was going, okay, I know that what I did before had a good result over here. It gave me good income. Mm -hmm. um, but what was wrong about it? Like, why didn't I have that freedom? Why did, why wasn't I truly happy? Why didn't I have that flexibility? Um, why did I like always find myself every two years finding something new? And I think that's really, really common as entrepreneurs is we kind of hang, we hang like a badge of honor on being a serial entrepreneur. I did too, where it's like, oh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I just like start businesses all the time. And it's so cool. And it wasn't cool because Don't the thing me. that happened, yeah, the thing that happens is, is you start to start all these different things and you never give that one thing enough chance to build momentum. And that's why I always had to kind of, it was, I was always on the boom and bust model. I made a bunch of money, but I was stressed out every month, mm -hmm. which required me, so I, which made it so I didn't have the freedom and flexibility. So my, my five non-negotiables, I sat down in 2011, 2012, and, and after I got rid of my other companies, sold them, or just parted ways for them, kept my real estate, kept my consulting business, which was just a couple clients at that time. And I said, okay, what is it that are non-negotiable moving forward in my next business that if these don't happen, Happen, I'm either going to shut the business down or the number one priority is going to become changing that um, because I want to make sure to build a business that that serves me uh, serves because if, if it doesn't serve me, I can't serve others. 
Um, it's kind of like the whole airplane analogy. You put that, you put the mask on yourself before you put it on the kids. You got to build a good solid business yourself before yes. you can truly serve a lot of other people. Yep. So serve me, serve my community and have like a real good mission. So number one, non-negotiable for myself was a singular focus on the big thing, mm -hmm. man. I started several companies and I thought it was cool. And all of them were kind of half-assed efforts. I wasn't doing great in any of them. Mm -hmm. And so I said, man, what if I just focused on one company? You know, what, what could I do if I just focused on one? Yeah. And then, so number two was, and this is all before carrot. So number two was have fun in, in like bold and underline and have a big mission. I believe in at my core. The problem with my previous company was we had a stated mission on the website, but it was kind of, it was a stated mission. It was one that seemed like we all need to know that we need to have a mission, right? Or a life purpose. But what happens is, is oftentimes that purpose of the mission kind of finds us when we stop looking for it. But when we're like pressing ourselves to go, Hey, I'm going to write this cool mission. It's usually something like this. This is, this was my mission then. Um, uh, something like this. It was, it was, uh, inspire and equip a million uh, entrepreneurs to da, 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 da. Like that sounds cool. It sounded really cool. It sounded pretty awesome. But it wasn't one of those things that hit me in my core to where every single thing I did in business and life just naturally led into that. I had to work really, really hard to, to make myself believe that that was it. So I'm like, I want a mission that everything I do, it just is natural. It just is natural. Like our mission here at Carrot is add humanity to business and help people save time for precious things in lives that matter. And the, my favorite core value at Carrot we have, we have nine amazing core values, but my favorite one is be a beacon of positivity and possibility. Wow. So th those are just natural for me. Like I want to do those every single day and I believe in that at my core. Non-negotiable number three was consistent and predictable. Consist consistent, 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 predictable. Everything, because my previous stuff wasn't. I knew, man, if I want flexibility, if I want to really build momentum, I've got to have consistency in my income model. I've got to have predictability. I want to know yeah. what my income is going to be within 10% two months from now. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I think it's possible. And so I started to look at, at, at business models that would do that. A software as a service company, as an example, does that. Passive real estate does that. Businesses that are consistent, predictable, that have business models that I invest in do that. So I built everything around that. I'm like, I want to know what my income is going to be like in three months because then I can actually take a month off and not worry about it. No doubt about it. Like, yeah. I just real quick, I want to interject. The most consistent mm -hmm. income I have every single month is my rental income. Yep. Th there's nothing exactly. more consistent than that. I don't know how many wholesale deals I might do. I don't know how many flips I might do or which ones will close that month. But mm -hmm. I do know for a fact, within 10%, <laughs> how much rental income yeah. I'm going to collect. So that's really important. So I've got focus on one big thing as mm -hmm. number one. I've got um, have fun, have a big mission, and yep. and then be consistent and predictable as, as, the, as the first three. That's number three. So number four is build a long-term valuable asset. So many of us are working our butts off in our 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, just churning and burning on something that's not building any value. You're making money. You got money in the bank. But what happens if you walk out and, and um, you hit by a bus? You yeah. know, I was talking with some entrepreneurs. We have an event uh, twice a year here in our offices in, in Oregon called Carrot Camp. And these guys are doing a lot of money in deals. Like uh, one of the guys from Utah, he's going to do about $2.5 million in their wholesale fees this year. Brad Chandler, one of the biggest home buyers in the country, he'll do 25 or 30 deals this month. Um, he was out here and other people like that. And we were talking about that. We were talking about, man, it's great building up a, a business, but what happens if something happens to us? What happens with our families? And so I'm like, I want to build a long-term valuable asset where if I wanted to, I could sell it. I have no intentions on selling care because I'm having so much fun doing right. it. But also if something were to happen to me, you know, every, all that work that I put in over the years actually built something that is worth something for my family for sure. that they can cash in on and not be harmed. Number five is live on purpose um, and in my unique abilities. Before I was doing great work. We had a great product. I was I was doing work that was fun sometimes and not a lot of time. But I didn't feel like I was living on purpose. I felt like life was kind of was dragging me through it. And I was going, okay, how do I live on purpose? And how do I actually show up every single day feeling like I know why I'm here that day and I know who I can touch and who I can help change their life? This podcast, dude, that's the reason I, I go on podcasts. I'm so pumped and so just grateful 
uh, that I have the ability to, to be able to hop on here and just share my experiences. Cause if one person would listen to this and then go, man, I need to change this. And then it, it changes their family tree for generations because they shifted the way they think about their life or business. I, that's my mission. That's, that's check it off. And I did my, did my work that day. Um, and then that last part of number five, so live on purpose and in my unique abilities was in my previous stuff. Once again, I was doing what people paid me well to do. I was doing what I was really good at, but it wasn't giving me energy. It wasn't within my unique abilities. So I was going, okay, even though at the time I wrote this, I didn't know how I would spend most of my time within my unique abilities because I didn't know how I could make money hopping on podcasts at that time. Right. I didn't know how I could make, and I don't make money doing this, but I, I, I didn't know how I could make money just doing strategy, not doing any execution or you know, doing these other things. And so every single quarter, I shifted my mindset a little bit and I challenged myself with that energy audit, removing things that sucked my energy and then, and then taking that two hours, that five hours over here and doing, doing something that gave me energy, even if I didn't know how that thing would make me money. Because I automated the thing over here, got someone to do the thing that made me money, and I put energy over here. The funny thing is, when you spend time on your unique abilities, you make a lot more money, yep. you have a lot more fun, and totally. it's awesome. That is incredible stuff, Trevor. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, go to oncarrot.com, on C A R R O T dot com forward slash energy to download that uh, energy audit form um, a lot of people might be wondering why we just focused a good portion of the time on on this subject i personally yeah. believe that information is 10 15 20 percent of it i mm -hmm. want to get to the information i want to get to the great stuff we're going to talk about carrot here in a second but trevor just talk about this point for a second everything that you we the conversation has been going on for about 20, 25 minutes. Everything yep. we've talked about to this point, talk about why that's even more important than the, than the information, I guess, that we're going to give them. Dude, the, the tactical stuff is easy, right? Like um, kind of once you get into it, you, you can figure out the tactical stuff. You can listen to podcasts. You can join masterminds, get a coaching program. The tactical stuff is easy. The thing is what holds people back from actually executing the tactical stuff is all mindset stuff. Totally. And also the biggest thing is a lot of people want to move fast. They want to get results fast. But the problem is if they're moving, like if, if you, if you, this analogy is overused, right? But if you whip out a map, go back to map days, you know, when you actually had a physical map, but if you whip out a map and you're sitting here in Roseburg, Oregon, your mission is to get to New York. Um, but you really don't know like how you're going to get there uh, really specifically. You just know like New York is my destination. You could, you could end up winding your way in all kinds of different paths. Maybe you would get there. Maybe you wouldn't, you might get distracted or get lost in the way. But if you had a clear path that was the most efficient and best way to get there, you know, that's obviously the, the, the right route. Now that's what we're trying to give you guys is a clear path to build the business that actually gives you the things you hoped you would get as, as uh, when you became an entrepreneur, because like I so said, what happens is we have these things locked in our mind on what we want, freedom, flexibility, finances, hopefully someday impact. That's pretty universal across all entrepreneurs. But then we get in that car without a plan on how to get those. We start to, we start to chase the tactics that make us the money. And we think that just the money on, on a given month is then going to solve those things. And I can tell you it doesn't it does because not. you can build the business yep. that makes money, that gives you no freedom, no flexibility. You're stressed out. And then you'll find your way, working your way out of that income pretty fast like I did. Uh, I remember in 2010 and 11, like I said, mid twenties, um, there were some days where I made 15 or 20 grand, um, in many months where I made well over a hundred thousand dollars as a mid 20 year old guy. It wasn't every month, but many months. Um, and man, I, I can also tell you at that time, I thought I had it figured out. I'm like, I know how to make money. I, like, I know how to make this money. As soon as I started to, to, to kind of realize I, what I didn't build my business the correct way the foundational stuff around the non-negotiables, around your energy, around your unique abilities. What happened was I kept on getting distracted, got distracted, got distracted. Yep. So I was trying to find that happiness. My income went down, 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 way below what I ever thought it would because I thought I had it figured out. I thought my income is never going to go below this because I figured out how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to never have to do that. I want you guys to, to build the business from the start, knowing exactly how that business is going to serve you, serve your life, serve your family, serve those around you and build it from the start and not have to go through what I went through. I couldn't have said it better. And there are a lot of people out there that are, you know, Trevor, that may just be, you know, trying to do their first deal. 
and maybe mm-hmm. they're stuck in the nine to five and, and you know they're they're listening to some podcasts and trying to get some tactical stuff to try to get them out of it. We harp yep. on this everything that we've spoken about for the past 20, 25 minutes. I harp on this on this on this podcast a lot because cool. I did the same thing. Trevor, I did the exact same thing. I built a massive wholesale business that was doing a lot of volume, but we also had a huge, huge overhead and mm. it was all reliant upon me. Yep. And, and once I, you know, if I get distracted, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I go out there and I bought a mobile home park and it sounds awesome. And it, and it is passive today, but when I bought it, it was a turnaround project. So I was <laughs> in it for three months. Well, guess what? That took me completely out of my wholesale business. So the wholesale mm. business slowed way down while I went and did yep. this. And guys, I, I just can't stress, um, what Trevor's talking about enough, go back and rewind and listen to the last 20 minutes. This is the stuff that this is how you build a, an actual business that will serve you. So thank you, Trevor, for for all of this. And now let's get to some tactical stuff. I want to get to kind of some of the fun Sweet. stuff for a lot of the people that are listening. Let's start from the very beginning. What is Investor Carrot? Yep. So we we are we're a software company, and we basically that if kind of really distilling it down. If you were to Google sell my house fast, we buy like any of those phrases from motivated house sellers, a lot of phrases for cash buyers, you're going to find between three and eight uh, carrot, <laughs> carrot websites, carrot clients controlling page one and Google for those. So now that's like thousands of phrases, every city in the country pretty much. And, um, and we help you launch a website that based on science uh, converts a visitor into a lead at a higher rate. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, and then also we have tools, training and support to help you get an advantage in ranking well in Google. Uh, we don't do it for you. We do a lot of the technical parts done for you, but then there's still work that has to be done. And we coach you on that. We give you resources to get it done for you if you do want to. Um, and then we coach you on how to drive traffic through paid routes too. So the, the, the essence of it is we help you generate leads online that are higher margin, that are usually higher profit than a lot of the offline leads. I'll tell a quick story here that kind of distills the the value play, not just for Carrot, but for you as an entrepreneur, so you can save a bunch of time and headache, is um, the number one home buyer in Oklahoma, and we work with a lot of the biggest home buyers in the country. I mean, tons of those guys. We also work with a lot of the newer investors because the tool works well for both. And um, uh, these guys are large home buyers in Oklahoma. I think their company's 1-800-2-SELL-HOMES or something like that. But anyway, it's um, uh, they're, they're large home buyer in Oklahoma. And they had a custom WordPress site before. They spent some good money on it. Um, they were doing a bunch of deals, right? This TV, radio, direct mail, a little bit of online, not really much. And they came to us saying, we really want to ramp things up online because we got a couple online leads before and those deals were really profitable. They were like way more profitable than the offline ones they were doing, which is, which is normal. And I'll explain why here in a second. And so then they kind of went into our ecosystem uh, they went through our concierge program where they just didn't want to touch anything. They're like, we just want you guys to set up our website, dial it in, you know, brand it with and for us, personalize it all and launch it. So we did all that for them. And we got an email about two weeks later from them saying, man, uh, we didn't expect results this fast. They were already ranking well in Google for some things with their old site. Mm-hmm. Um, so just by switching out the website, the ranking was already there and they're already doing a lot of offline marketing that was driving to their website. Just by switching the website, their leads more than doubled. And and then we got an email about two or three days ago from Stuart, uh, one of the owners of the company. I said, hey, how are things going? Are you guys closing deals? This is only about two or three months after they launched, I think two months. And he goes, paraphrasing here, but he said, basically, um, we're getting way more leads than we ever had gotten online. Uh, or we've scaled our, our, our TV advertising, <clears throat> advertising back 50% over the last two years, but now we're getting more leads than we were before. Mm-hmm. But he said, the cool thing is our, our average profit per deal is tends to be higher with our online deals right now. And they're closing their online leads um, at a higher percentage than their offline leads. And that's very, very normal because of the way that uh, just the, the inherent nature of online marketing versus offline. You know, offline, you're kind of usually trying to interrupt or get in front of someone in their daily path. It could be on a phone call. It could be a direct mail piece. It could be radio or TV. Um, They all work. Like I'm not saying not to do them. I think you should do all have a good marketing mix. Um, They all work, but online inherently people are going online to seek out uh, answers to their problems. So they're going online to go sell my house fast or sell inherited house in Birmingham as an example. 
and then they find some websites. It could be in the paid ads, it could be in the organic, and now they are in control of their education at that point. They're right. seeking you out, they're more motivated. And then if you do the right things on your website, you can then engage with them better, especially on a cell phone if, you, if your website's built right. You can engage with them better. You can give them the right information at the right time in the right order and have the elements on the page set up in a way based on science that gets them to engage in your website and to become a lead at a much higher rate and build credibility. So what do you guys do specifically that, I mean, double someone, potentially double someone's online leads in a matter mm -hmm. of a couple of months? What, what does Kara yes. do, do specifically? Yeah, so for, for that guy as an example, he was already driving, he was already marketing pretty aggressively, right? So so this is this is this example is from for someone who's already got a marketing machine going and we're just going, we plug in this one thing, a new website what? set up a different way. Yeah, and what? I'll tell you what those things are. Yeah, yeah. There's hundreds of them, but I'll give you some some important ones. So uh, part of my background, man, I've I've done a ton of uh, what's called split testing. And over the years, um, I just I was getting traffic to my websites, and I discovered split testing tools where you can get a little tool, put a little script on your web page, and say, test these two things. Test that web page as it was before against maybe changing this one element. Change the button on it, make it bigger, or change this, or move this here. And over over a thousand split tests over the last decade, um, I've learned a lot of things. Kind of, we have our 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 framework now that tends to convert a much higher than most people's website. And here's the basics of the framework. Um, first of all, most people's website don't, don't have a really good call to action that's crazy, crazy, crazy crystal clear at the top of their website. Mm. Uh, most of them just kind of say, hey, we'll buy your house, cash, da 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 the same thing everyone else says. And then they make it hard for someone to engage on the page and actually become a lead. Uh, they might put a button there that leads to another page that then you have to fill out 14 form fields as a seller. Or they may have the, the form right there, but it's like 9 or 10 or 12 form fields instead of just a, a few. Um, it could be that you don't have credibility built in on the web page. So people are having to dig or they, 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 they immediately don't get a good feeling, so they bounce back to Google and they go to someone else's website. But if I were to give five things for people, it'd be much easier if I showed a web page, actually. So, um, so let's do this. Let, I got a great idea. Can I show one? Yeah. Well, I want to um, – can, can we do like a specific example? Um, uh -huh. Let's – can we use mine? Dude, let's do it. I want to – Let's do it. I'm getting some uh, professional advice here. So if <laughs> I type in – like I just did it, and we fluctuate. If I type in sell my house oh, – what did I type in? Sell my house fast, Birmingham is what I typed in. Alabama mm -hmm. Cash Deals is my company, and we are fifth organically. Okay. Um, one, t and by the way, you mentioned Brad Chandler's name. Brad Chandler Express Home Buyers is always number one in our market. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, he's been taking it over the last couple months. You've got sure. We Buy Ugly Houses is number two, and then you've got a couple of people here are local that are above me, and I'm the fifth one organically. If you, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen my website, but if you go to that, what what specifically can carrot can you do? Because yep. it sounds to me like you're saying that we you you guys take what we already have and make it better. Yeah. So if if you were to move over to carrot as an example, um, you would you would kind of be ditching your old website coming over to our platform. It's all be, on our servers, our platform. My website would be completely. I'm completely ditching it, like everything about it, the way it looks, everything. Yep. The yep, SEO sure. that I have, the stuff that I have on it, completely. So the SEO, the SEO stuff that got you there would still would still come over because a lot of it's attached to your domain name. So any backlinks okay. you've built, any things like that, okay. always follow the domain name. Okay. Whenever we work with a client like you that already has a, a website ranked uh, well, let's say the top five, top six in Google, um, we usually do go through the concierge program. Um, or that's where we just kind of do the stuff with and for you to ensure that your ranking remains and if not increases. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things with your website and I haven't ran a, a page speed test on it, <clears throat> but usually when people move over to carrot, their website loads faster because of the tech stack that we built on. That's one thing that's really important, but the biggest thing is conversion wise. Let me do this. So if anyone's actually watching the video, let me see if I can make this thing work, man. I'm just going to share my screen and see if it'll let me share. It's probably gonna share my whole darn computer though, is the thing. And I've got a big old huge Mac. <laughs> it's gonna everything gonna look crazy small. So, so let me try this. So while Trevor's doing that, guys, um, check this out. If you are listening to this as the podcast, go when you're done driving, go. We link everything up on YouTube. 
So go check this out on YouTube. We get about 50-50, Trevor, 50% mm -hmm. just listen to us um, through the, through uh, online, the podcast tools. 50% cool. actually watch us on YouTube. So go to this. There's no better example than this right here than why you need to go get the YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go, go to YouTube, y'all. So I've got my screen shared right now. I'm going to show some websites. So I've got your, your website pulled up here and, and yours is actually doing some of those elements that, that work. Like you've got a clear call to action up here at the top. It's not buried down below. They don't have to click through a different page to find all that stuff. You've got it over on the right side. We did test putting that, that form in the left side versus right side. And the right, the right side always worked better when we tested it. And I think it's mainly because the way that people read and the way they communicate, right? They start left, right. So you're building up the value and the value proposition of what you can do on the left side, which logically flows to the form to the right. So the form, the form on the right side or the form in the middle, and I'll show you some examples of that here in a second, work really good. Um, where you could definitely increase performance is I would, I would add, I would, I would add credibility here. So let me pop over to, to this web page here. So this is the one from Oklahoma that I mentioned their branding. I'm not a fan of, of black and yellow. Like I just don't like that, that kind of harsh look, but that's their branding and this is working really good. So there's a couple things here. Now, I mentioned that, that you can center up the form or you can put it to the right. It doesn't matter if you center it or put it to the right. It just matters that the con that the information that people are absorbing is in the right order. So you can see here when I land on the page, my eye is going to be drawn. It's going to be drawn to this area, first of all, because I'm creating contrast. So write that down. Your call to action area should create visual contrast immediately. And I call it the grunt test. And I kind of like, you know how when you're looking at something, you kind of like make your eyes blur on purpose or like they kind of cross. Um, like I, I'll literally sometimes do that. Like I'll blur my eyes on purpose and pull back and just look at the overall page mm -hmm. and I'll go, okay, where's my eye immediately drawn to based on the blur? If I can't see any words, like where is it drawn to? And you can draw it there for, for with colors, with the buttons, with, uh, with outlining the area. You can see with this one, your eye is immediately drawn to the opt-in area, big white form fields, big, huge, huge yellow button. If we bounce, bounce over to yours. My eye, if I blur it out, my eye isn't necessarily drawn to your form. It's drawn to the big red box, which that's that's good. But I would highlight the form much, much, much more. Um, the second thing is we tested this to, with about 20 to 25 websites around the country. And we wrote a blog post about it a couple of years ago. And the actual button that you have here makes a big deal. Um, on one website, we actually increased leads by 45%. Another one was over 100% just by changing the size and what words were inside of this button. Hmm. So I'm going to give you guys two tips. Um, we found in other tests have corroborated outside of this industry too, that when your button is the same size as your form fields and your form fields are the same size as your button, it increases performance. Now people would ask why, like if the person's really motivated, wouldn't they fill out this information and aren't they smart enough to just click the darn send button? Well, yeah, you're going to get leads through that for sure. But when we made it bigger and made it easier, it increased the ease the ease of someone doing it on, on their cell phone, on mobile devices. So if you can imagine someone who's older in Birmingham, they land on your website, they're trying to they're trying to fill this out with their thumbs, likely, right, if, if they're using their cell phone. How easy or hard is that send button gonna be to find for a person that's in their 70s or late 60s or 80s? And how easy for the, is it gonna be for them to push that send button? Um, the next thing is the words in their send. Same thing. People wouldn't believe that this is that this is uh, uh, a big deal. Just the words in there. There's a client of ours, uh, Gabriel Garcia, a big investor out of out of um, out of Florida, and he uses Care, and he has a custom website. And his custom website was ranked really well as well, and it was getting really good leads too. But he said, "Hey, how can I make this convert better?" And his website already looked pretty darn good, man. It had credibility, had the had the opt-in area kind of like really highlighted. Uh, visually, but then his opt-in button was the right size, but the words literally, I think said send. And what we found is when you can put words in there that actually, that actually give them results in advance or tell them what value they're going to get by submitting that form versus just the action of send, it increases conversion, increases their, their want and desire to submit that form. Wow. So as an example, we tested a lot of different words. We tested get my offer. We tested continue. We tested go to the next step. We tested, you know, get my fair cash offer, get my fast offer, get my fast cash offer. We tested all kinds of different words. Um, the words fair converted better than fast because inherently people wanted fair more than fast most of the time. And we found that get my fair cash offer 
were the words in our testing. Now, there might be other words that might convert as good, if not better, that we haven't tested yet. But get my fair cash offer outperformed every other phrase inside the button. Wow. Um, why, why is it? Because they know that by pushing that button, it's going to give them what they want. They came here to get an offer and they want it to be fair. They didn't come here to send a form. And so that's one big mistake is, because so what am I going to get by sending this? It says get started. It says they buy houses. It says fill out the basic information. Now, yeah, I'm going to get that, but most people won't read that stuff. So what am I getting started with and what am I going to get when I send it? So you always want to make it crystal clear what the next step is and, and focus on the benefits and value they get, not the action of the thing that's happening. That's a biggie. And that right there will increase your conversion rate. If you're running a split test, you'll find a conversion rate boost. Um, let's see. Let me pop over here. Navigation. Navigation is important. Dude, I, I could talk just on conversion for an hour, but I'm just going to pull out a few things for you guys. Um, so navigation is a biggie. When we first started doing websites, I kind of didn't really pay much attention to what was up here in the links. Um, and that's how most people are. They'll throw a link up there that says home so people can go back to their home page. They'll throw FAQ process, things like that. And that's all good. And a lot of people kind of emulate what we have now, which is fine. And so what we started to do is we were running these split tests and even on tests that didn't win, as an example, we thought this thing would win, but it didn't. Um, what we, what would happen was we would look at this thing called a heat map and the heat map is simple, a simple thing in a split testing software that shows what are people engaging in and engaging with on the page. Even if it's not a button, they could be clicking on an image that's not, uh, that doesn't go anywhere, but the heat map picks it up and shows, man, a bunch of people are clicking on this image. So it kind of like guides us as, as data scientists then go, okay, what do we do about that? Why are people naturally clicking on that image? Or why are people naturally clicking on this link, the fourth one in and not the first one? And so we started to really learn about a lot about human psychology, about the psychology of a seller, like psychology of a buyer. And I wrote a blog post on this, and there's a certain path that all of your prospects go through uh, before they choose to make a decision with to work with you or someone else. And I've actually got a blog post on it. Let me do this slide really quick. Um, I have a serial killer. Not that. Motivated house seller on carrot. So I've got this little graph. It'll be easy. So if you guys listen to the podcast, head over to the, to the YouTube channel to see this as well, because this could be game changing for you. We use this for all of our marketing. If you're doing retargeting, your ads, all of your stuff should follow this model. We don't have time to get into it today. That might be a follow up podcast we do. But I created this framework um, that basically walks through the decision path of a house seller or house buyer. And first of all, they have to become problem aware. Right? They have to be aware that they even have a problem that is going to cause them to sell a house or buy it. And so at that point, you know, they're going to now finally notice that bandit sign or that billboard that's been on the same road they've driven by a hundred times over the right. past two years, but never noticed it. Um, at that point, they're going to actually notice the direct mail piece. So they're going to go to Google, they're going to go to Google and start to type up phrases to solve their problem. Then now, now as they're problem aware, they're going to find the, the kind of the, the solutions out there that can possibly solve it for them. You know, there's that billboard that they saw. Okay. It looks like they buy houses. I wonder if that can fit me. They did some Google searches. There's three or four websites that they all sell that they all say that they buy houses and they can close fast and they close with cash and they, they all look kind of local. And so now that's in their brain bank of what solutions there are. Now, this is where it's important is that this phase right here, they know that there's five, six, seven different possible solutions. There's Aunt Peggy, the real estate agent who, who can maybe sell my house because I hear houses are selling quickly today. And there's the two postcards I got and the bandit sign I saw and there's three websites. And they all kind of say the same thing. We'll buy house, we'll pay cash, we can close quick and we're local. So at that point, they're looking for differentiators. They're going, okay, what is it that's different about like which company should I work with now? And there's certain limiting beliefs, roadblocks, things that are going through their mind that you need to get over with your website. I'm going to show you guys how you do that with navigation bar and with credibility. And some of those things for a seller could be, well, I've heard those people make lowball offers. I'm afraid if I submit this thing, are they just going to hound me on the phone and make me an offer that's just crazy? You know, I've heard that some of these people from my buddy, he went through one of these people and they made him an offer and then they didn't close and they bailed out at the last minute. Like, is that going to happen to me? Are they actually going to do what they say they're going to do? Um, like, is this legit? My, my buddy real estate agent over here said that what they're doing is illegal. Like, is this, should I get wrapped up in this? Uh, there was a news story in this guy that was a house flipper in LA that was scamming people. Mm -hmm. Like, are they, like, is this a legitimate profession? So all these things pop up in their mind. 
And what we need to do on our websites is your navigation bar needs to actually give information in the exact order they need it and they make a decision. Here's an example. They're problem aware. They show up here, your copy in your web page and also your very first link in your navigation bar we found when we tested it should directly address the problem aware mindset. I've got a problem. I have a house I need to sell. Your content should immediately let them know that you can solve that. You know, you can sell it to them and then maybe mention some of your main things, no fees, no commissions, put more cash in your pocket, get a fair offer, closing the data. Yeah, da, da, da. That's all to the problem aware person. Okay. Cause your competitors are probably saying something similar. So now solution aware is going, okay, I kind of understand there's these different solutions, real estate agents, some investors, da, da, da. but how's like, how's the process work though? Like, I don't really get it. I understand how it works to list a property, but I don't really understand how this works. So magically your navigation bar, should, your, your website should present that content in that order that they need to learn it. So then you drive them to a page that teaches them how it works. Right. At that point they go, I, I kind of get it now. So I get that. That's how it works. Da, da, da. But so, so how is it really different? Like how are they different from a real estate agent then? How's it compare? You know, so what, what happens here? It's like, I've got a comparison table now that compares how we are different from an agent. And then you're like, okay, cool. So I, I think I kind of get how this works now, but are, are they legit? Like, is this a company that's good to work with? Right. Testimonials, our company. What do we do? We, we, we nail them with testimonials and your testimonials should always be very intentional. I was talking with my team about this the other day that a lot of people, including some of our team members, uh, inadvertently do testimonials. Just, they think throwing a testimonial online is a good thing, but it's not like if you, if you just put a video up here and you didn't have this here, um, kind of telling people what the value or the benefit in that testimony is, why I should watch it. Most people aren't going to watch your videos. Um, or a lot of people paste big or long testimonials, but what they need to do is they need to write that list of limiting beliefs, objections, and roadblocks that they have of working with you or someone like you. And let's say there's six or seven common ones for motivated house sellers. You should write that list and go, okay, I need to find a testimonial. If you've been doing deals, uh, that combats each one of those limiting beliefs and roadblocks. Wow. And then as you go through here, you have a video of it or a written one of it, and then you pull out that thing up here um, in the headline that, addre that immediately right. addresses that limiting belief. Right here, we got a fair offer. That's a limiting belief they have. That's of, awesome. Are they going to lowball? Are they going to lowball me? Well, no, because this guy Christopher S from Maryland, he got a fair offer, and I'm going to watch his video. I'm probably going to get a fair offer too. You know. So that's the next thing, and then after that, they might have some other random questions that you didn't answer in that stuff. That's where your FAQ page comes up, answering all those other random questions. And then you always want to make sure you have call to action areas at the mm -hmm. bottom of every single page in your website, mm -hmm. every page, every page, because when they're going through and, and learning the stuff, if they didn't opt in on the home page, and then they're, they're digging in, they're like, they need more information. One thing people forget to do is if the person's on the FAQ page, they obviously didn't opt in on the home page for a reason. They needed more information or they needed vetting and verifying to, to build credibility with you. And so if they get done reading this stuff, you should always give them a next action. Okay, cool. You got through reading this stuff. Do this now. Don't don't leave them wandering and wondering what to do next. Cool. You read this. Awesome. Get your offer now. Or this is a big mistake. Dude, I can talk. About, I'm, I'm going to quit talking here in a second. But this is a big mistake here. A lot of people put free reports on their homepage for sellers and buyers don't do that. Mm. They didn't come to get a darn free report. They came to get a, an offer right. or if they're a cash buyer, they came to see properties. They didn't come to join your list or to get a free report right. on how to be an investor. So, you know, they put, put your free reports at the bottom of pages or on some of these secondary pages as they're researching, because if they haven't opted in to get an offer yet, they might not be ready to, but they might now be ready to get a free report. But you never right. want to lead with that. Totally. Yeah. So I guess what I hear you saying, Trent, first of all, thank you. That's, that's some awesome stuff. Great stuff. And I highly encourage every one of you to go check out our YouTube channel. Um, just search mm -hmm. Alaria, A-L-A-R-E-I-A, -A -E and, uh, and it'll come up. So the question for me, Trevor, is, okay, I'm... I'm sold. I want to use you. I want to kind of convert all my stuff over to your, you know, what you're doing, your platform. But my website as it looks today is gone. A hundred percent. And it's going to be replaced with something that you and your team is going to design for me. Yep. Yep. Correct. And but, it's, it, it'd be based off of our framework. So let me show you as an example, here's a large home buyer in Tennessee. They moved their site over to us. And their leads more than double too. They were already ranking really well in Google. 
but we moved them over to our high converting framework. And so they were kind of nervous too. Like, Oh man, we're going to, this website that's been getting us leads, we're going to be bailing from it. Right. Yes. But now they get way more leads and it's still wrapped around their branding and their credibility. Right. And for, and I don't understand all the, the science and the mechanics behind it, but somehow, some way what already is built from an SEO standpoint stays with my site. You're just, you're just designing something that's that you guys have obviously found that works better, converts better. And, and what's going to happen is I'm going to rank higher. Hopefully you, 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 you could for sure. So with your website in, in, in particular, I'm looking at it right now and I haven't had a chance to kind of use our tools to do an analysis of your website, but with your website in particular, you don't have a lot of content on the homepage, but your homepage is the one that's ranking, right? So my, my guess just from my experience is the reason your homepage is ranking in the middle of page one is probably because of your off page SEO. It's your backlinks. Maybe you've got some citations going, things like that. Um, so if you were to move over to carrot, we would look at the pages that are ranking. And, um, this is once again, we will do this through our concierge program. If we're like going to take a, an already existing website that's ranking really well, migrate you over. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this white glove approach for every single customer that's coming through, but we'll teach everyone how to do that. You know, so if you're an investor that doesn't have the budget for the concierge program, um, and you want to just dig in and go through our weekly coaching calls or go through our training, we'll show you exactly what you need to do. But with this, you would have a homepage that would have more content on it. Um, and it would be content unique to you. Like as an example, if we were to do it, we, our copywriter would go in and write the content for you through the concierge program. Um, if, if it's someone who doesn't have the budget for that and just joining normally, cool. Join one of our plans that are a hundred bucks a month or so. And then you can just go through our training and, and do the things yourself, which is cool. And then your site, your branding would come over. We would make sure to get local images on there. Or if you guys are doing the work yourself, you guys can put local images on there, put your branding in there. It's really easy. And then you should get better rankings if you have more content. Your website is going to be really, really hard um, to overcome the number one ranking without more content on your page. Um, so just briefly, I know that this is podcast is not all about me, <laughs> but yep. we've kind no, of I love it though. Kind it's, of made it's a good it example. Me. So yep. yeah, we're going to cut this out. You're showing other people's. We're gonna we're gonna. <laughs> well, this that's that's Brad's. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good so, example though because look at the content on here. So. His, his website has has some good, robust content on the page, and that's one of the big things that Google's looking for right now that I, I bet a thousand bucks that that you probably could get your website to the top two with a really aggressive backlink building campaign, but it wouldn't stay there for very long um, without robust content. So just briefly, I, I want to say this. I think the reason we're ranked so high, if you go back to where my website is, mm -hmm. it is like down at the very bottom where you've got the, the, all the cities, the A through Z or whatever it is. Apparently yep. this is what my web designer told me. Like there's like, I think there's 999 cities in the state of Alabama and they're all on every single, they're all, they're 999 different homepages. Sweet. So Sweet. I, I think that's what, so is that something that's duplicatable on your end that to, to take advantage of that? Cause I feel like we'll, yep. we'll lose all of it. It is. Yep. Yep. Is, is this, is this on WordPress? It is correct. Yeah. So for a guy like you, um, it, same thing, you, like you would definitely go through the concierge program. Um, you, you would just have to, you would basically export your XML file out of all your content and all of your, your URL structure. Uh, we would import it into our system. And so there's certain things like if someone's ranking well and they have a lot of content, your URL structure needs to say exactly the same. If these are ranking well, um, and let's say that this one is ranking number one in Google for Vernon. I mean, th this URL structure isn't ideal, honestly. Uh, it, it should have the st this state in there because there's a lot of times that people will put in, you know, Springfield, but there's a hundred different Springfields around the country, you know? And so we want to make sure that the URL ideally has like the state in it, but you've got the state over here, so we're good. But if this was ranking really, really well, we would make sure that all these URL slugs are all exactly the same. And if this was already ranking number one, we would keep your content as it is, maybe add a picture or two on that page. But like literally, we'd probably just keep the content as it is and then build in your website on our, on our higher converting platform and it would convert better. Yep. Thank you, Trevor. Appreciate that. But now let's get let's get back to some some practical stuff for some other people. So talk yep. about you. You mentioned about a hundred bucks a month. What would what does someone get with that? That's not the concierge. That's kind of specific to them. Um, I mm -hmm. heard so. I, we had Dan Barrett 
on our podcast maybe a couple of yep. months ago. And he, I know he's working um, with you guys, or at least in some sort of capacity. There's some sort of relationship mm-hmm. there. He said that Investor Carrot is it. it he he used the analogy that it's something like, you know, everybody's trying to get over. I don't even know what it is. Maybe you can say it better. Everyone's trying to get over a wall, and and Investor Carrot is selling ladders. <laughs> and so so it's not I like that that, it's not like it's going to help you get all the way over the wall. But say there's a ten foot wall, it's selling eight foot ladders. So it's getting you most of the way up there. There's still some yeah. work that you have to do. Talk specifically about what you guys can do for someone who may be new, brand new, doesn't have a website now and wants a web presence? Yep, good good question, man. So the, the nexus of it is this, is if you're gonna launch a website, you wanna make sure that you don't have a leaky bucket, right? You wanna make sure that, because we're in a high margin business where your average profit per, per deal, I don't know what it, it is in Birmingham, but it could be 5K, 10K, 20K. We have some clients that their average profit per deal, uh, Tom Caffrell, a number one home buyer in Boston, mm-hmm. client of ours moved over to us, was already ranking well, immediately doubled his leads as well because of conversion. His average profit per deal is 70K. You know, so they're, they're all different. What if you, what, like, th- this is what I want to drill down and then I'll tell you exactly what we would help you guys do is, and this is why it's so important that you do this, is if you lose just one deal because of underperformance, because your website wasn't quite set up right, or you're doing a bunch of direct mail or offline. And some people are going there, but like the guys in Oklahoma found, they were losing a lot of leads because their website wasn't very usable on mobile and it wasn't set up to convert. If they lost one deal a year, which for them, they probably lost dozens mm-hmm. because of it, 20K, right? So, so to set up a high per- performing website, it takes a lot of work. If you're doing it from scratch, you set up the WordPress site, you get to have someone build a high converting template, not all the templates out there are high converting. Most aren't. Some are. Like you can you can patch them in. Then you got to write all the content. You got to come up with your own URL structure based off of science that's actually gonna gonna work. Your nav structure that's based off of science is actually gonna guide people there. You got to make sure you got the forms in the right spots and the buttons the right sizes based off of science. Because like I was saying, just by the button size and button color and the words in there, a lot of people just look at our sites and go, yeah, I just, I'm gonna kind of emulate this or have someone emulate it. That one change with Gabriel, you know, would, would have lost him tons of leads. So mm-hmm. we bake all of that into your website from the second that you click build in your carrot account, you click like, yeah, I want to go after motivated sellers. Cool. I'm going to click that one. I want to go after land sellers and land buyers. We have all kinds of different types of sites. You click it, it takes about 10 seconds for our system to build it all based off of our experience and what works. Then you can log in and you go, okay, well, um, I've got my good base here now. All the pages are there, all the navigations are there, all the contents there, everything is there based off of what we know converts. Now you just personalize it. So you put in your branding, you put in your logo, you go to your about page and get in a good bio and some pictures. You swap out the photos on your website so they're local right. and you get the stock photos out of there. And if you want to do SEO, then just go through and take our, our content that's already in there, use it as a framework and just go, okay, what does this paragraph say? Let me rewrite it in my own words. What's this paragraph say? What do these five bullet points say? Let me rewrite them in my own words so you have more custom content. So we take care of all that tech stack so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, most people, when they set up a WordPress site, they put on a, on cheap hosting, a Hostga- HostGator, you know, six ninety five a month plan. That's what I did for years. The problem is you're on a shared hosting account, which is going to load slower. It's going to be a lot less reliable. And if your website goes down because someone else on your server did something wacky, your website slows, and it happens to be the time when someone was going to navigate it and it's loading slower down for those two minutes, that could have cost you 20K. So we're on the most scalable, fastest servers you can imagine. Um, we're on the Amazon Amazon Cloud. You never have to worry about it. Like Literally, as mobile technology changes, we change that stuff for you on your site. Your site looks amazing on mobile, converts great on mobile. Um, that was the main problem with Tom Caffrell in, in Boston was he drives 100 plus leads a week uh, just through his website. And that's mm-hmm. not including any of his offline stuff, mm-hmm. but that's just through his website, mostly through Facebook ads. Okay. He was doing that before Carrot, but he was only getting about 40 to 50 leads a week. He switched over to Carrot because Carrot's really optimized for mobile and his other website wasn't his leads double. And so you're always going to stay ahead of the curve with the mobile side of things. Mm-hmm. Now, what you have to do from there is once you kind of dive in and personalize your site as much or as little as you want to, um, we literally have some people that just put a logo on there, do some basic stuff and start to drive paid traffic and it will convert. Right. Um, the more credibility you add in there, testimonials, yep. better business bureau, it's going to make it perform better. 
Um, but then after you get the site set up, now we need to get people to it. So if you're a brand new investor and you don't already have a bunch of traffic from places like the Oklahoma guys did or Tom or, or the Tennessee guys, then we have, we have a weekly coaching call and we have a plan where you guys can just basically go, okay, here's the budget that I have. Here's the time that I have. And we'll tell you an exact plan to go execute. And then you can go through our training. And whenever you have questions, you hop on our weekly coaching calls and ask those questions from either myself or Adrian on my team, who uh, is an active investor, close five to eight deals a month, and he crushes it. So we we take we make it so you don't have to worry about any of the conversion stuff, any of the WordPress, any of the tech stuff, any of the future tech stuff and making sure it's updated. You don't have to worry about getting hacked. Like a lot of people's WordPress sites get hacked because they didn't update these plugins. You don't have to worry about which plugins, paying any of that stuff, no hosting fees, none of that stuff. You can just worry about being an investor. You know? And – you don't have to go out and spend 10 to 20 K like I did on my website. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, so there, there are so many different benefits to using this. So it's it, so, and I'll just um, kind of almost <laughs> sell your service for you. If you go <laughs> right now to just something just as simple as we buy houses, Birmingham, sell my house fast, Birmingham. I haven't done this in a couple of months, but when I had a presentation about all this um, uh, two mm-hmm. or three months ago, Three out of the top ten organically are carrot sites in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And these are people who have decided to not go in and do a bunch of extra stuff. Yeah, they slapped a logo on there. They might have changed a couple of words around. Maybe did, you know, change the phone number and change some basic stuff mm-hmm. that they had to. But these are people who are not doing what you just said to do. So they went out and bought that eight-foot ladder, and that's great. But there's still two more feet that you need to scale and Trevor just got done explaining everything that you can do to make up that two foot gap there where you, it sounds to me like pretty easily now everybody's going to go try to do it, but it sounds to me like pretty easily that you could get in the top five or 10 just by using investor carrot. Yep. You you totally could. I mean, like I said, it's going to take a little bit of work, but that's the thing. I mean, if everyone with the push of a button could get the number one ranking in Google, then it's like, (laughs) Google's algorithm is garbage, right? So it's inherently, it's going to take some work to get there, but it's kind of one of those things that if you were racing a race car, would you want to make sure that you have the best equipment racing against the the race car drivers? Or are you going to go in there and go, well, they're using this and I want to be different and I'm just going to build this thing over here, which is far less superior. And that's probably the biggest objection we get right now because we're, we've penetrated the market so well, not because we're marketing hard, but because our clients are getting such great results everywhere. Yeah. And then they tell everyone and they see the results, but that's the big, kind of the biggest roadblock we have now is they'll see a lot of those sites like that and they think, Oh, well, this is what carrot looks like. And I want to look different. That's how I think. But yeah, and, and I showed you just a couple sites there that look very well branded and they convert insanely well. Totally. It's because people clicked the button, they maybe threw a logo up there, adjusted a couple things, and it's not on them. I mean, there's some things that we can make easier to make your site branded and whatever, but you can leverage our framework and really, really be proud about the brand in your website on our, on our system too. Trevor, tell everyone how, like where they can go, if this is something that they might be interested in doing, how, how can they kind of get in touch with um, your, your infrastructure there? Yeah, man. So just really simple. Just go to oncarrot.com, O-N-C-A-R-R-O-T.com. And you can check out some of the features there. I, I know we've got a, a demo video, but honestly, we need to update it because we've added a lot of new features since then. And what we really focus on is helping you attract the lead helping you then have great data and analytics and, and things around the leads. You can In our system, you can tell where did that lead come from. Was it a Facebook lead? Was it a Google lead, a Google AdWords lead? You can tell all that stuff. You can track your SEO rankings. We give you, we give you suggestions based on where you're ranking and how to make it better. There's a lot of tools we didn't even talk about that have nothing to do with the website. Um, we have content marketing tools a lot of our clients are using. One, one of my favorite lately is called Video Post where we found that if you do like a weekly three to five minute video on your cell phone, when you're on site um, and you upload that to YouTube, if you make a blog post out of it, those are really, really good content. Right. And so we made it to where you can just do your video, paste your YouTube URL into our system and we make a written blog post for you out of your video, optimized and it works really well. Bunch of features, but go to oncarrot.com, um, check it out, check out the plans. The one that most people pick, no, no matter if it's advanced or beginner, they pick the the Content Pro because that gives you the ability to launch three websites, up to three websites. So you can get your motivated house seller, cash buyer, your land site if you wanted to or whatever. 
And then there's a lot of other of our content marketing and tracking features in there too. Great stuff, man. So thank you, Trevor. I appreciate everything. The The first half of the show, talking really about the mindset. Don't forget to go to oncarrot.com forward slash energy um, to get yes. that energy audit. I'm doing, I'm literally going to try to, I'm looking, I've am looking. i got it pulled up. I'm going to look at it as soon as <laughs> we get good, off because that, that's huge. I'm kind of at that place where I've had a lot of the burnout in the past and now I'm doing what I love to do. I love the podcast. I love the RIA. I love the education. So I've, I'm, I'm yep. there, but I, I want to, I want to check out that. And then guys, if, if you think, um, investor carrot might be for you, go to on and at least take a look at it, you know, um, mm -hmm. go and at the very least watch this YouTube video of that section where Trevor really just kind of laid it all out and use me as mm -hmm. the Guinea pig. I'm, I'm super thankful for that. I love this podcast is so incredible because I get my own like one hour consultations with some of the That's greatest right, guys all throughout the country. So <laughs> it's been really cool. Trevor, thank you so much. It. Any, any last minute words you want to, you want to leave us with? Man, I, I think the biggest thing is, is like you said, just really focus on that first half of, of the podcast in a big way. Um, because it's so important. I mean, we only have one life to live. I know it's very, very cliche and I'll, I'll, I'll finish with this right here is, um, I saw this graphic a couple of years ago that really hit me hard and it's on a website called waitbutwhy.com. And he's got this graphic that basically outlines in really just like sobering ways, um, how little time all of us have left. Cause it's like, uh, it's just like a, a snap of a finger. And the thing that hit me was, was I'm 35. My parents are early sixties and this graphic basically showed, well, you know, if you visit your, my parents live out of town. I said, if you visit your parents, let's say five times a year and they're in their sixties and this graph shows the average age, you know, I really only have like 60 or 70 visits left with my parents in my whole life. And that really makes it like, whoa, every time, every single time I visit with my parents, it makes me really enjoy it a lot more. And also what it did was it makes me visit my parents more. It makes me focus on the important things more. The reason I'm saying this is your business should serve that. In my earlier years, I came up with all kinds of excuses not to do the important things because I had to have my head down in my business because I was always stressed out about how it was going to go. Yeah. So go through, create your non-negotiables, work in the energy out of every single quarter, build a business that truly serves you, gives you the freedom, the flexibility, um, the, the finances, and builds predictable momentum-building lead flow which is what we focus on here at Carrot. So, man, I appreciate the heck out of the invite on here. Hopefully some people got some value. There, there's no doubt about it. At the very least, I did, which I'm going to definitely <laughs> pass on, you know, through the use of our RIA and then obviously our platform. So, Trevor, thank cool. you, man. I appreciate you so much. I've heard so many incredible things about you, and I'm, I'm glad I finally got to experience that for myself and, and have a conversation with you. And uh, hopefully I'll be out to Oregon sometime, and possibly if you're ever in this neck of the woods, you know, definitely stop on by. So we'll Sweet. see. We'll awesome. see you, man. Guys, hit that subscribe button. Um, rate us and review us. Guys, we live on our reviews and our, and our ratings, so please do that. Take, us, take just 10 seconds to do that. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time.